opening stream. You know, got to drink a beer, innit? My high began with this loop. It's an old garage loop by um, one of the most insanely sick garage producers of all time. His name's Jeremy Sylvester. These two tracks here, although it looks like there's nothing on them, what is coming in from here is what you're hearing. Here's the loop. So that rolls and rolls throughout the whole tune. Yeah, there's a lot of processing on the sample. I could talk about that. Um, God, if I bypass this. So much top, jeez. So yeah, initially, loads of top end removal going on. But only on dynamic, only like taking out the hat because I didn't want to take it out on the clap, um, on, on the rim, you know, I didn't want to just hard cut it. Then I got the transient thingy on there. I'm taking out a little bit of attack, so I must have thought it was just hitting a bit too hard. Even more EQ, Jesus, yeah, I had to really go in on this sample to get it sounding the way I wanted. Yeah, that's the kind of thing you only really know what you're doing after you've compared it to a bunch of other tunes. That's like the initial absolutely disgusting dirty loop. Uh, I think we're backing that up with a rim here. Yeah. So just layering it um, and then a clap. Giving it some stereo width there. Got some nice like spread on that. Yeah, that is from the Delicate again, just little rim. And then massive kick drum for the punch. And then a big sub kick under that. So, yeah. so two kicks there, big sub one. And then one for punch. One for claps. But yeah, really, I mean, that loop is so fire and I just love old school garage so much. I didn't really want to mess with it too hard, to be honest, so. But yeah, where there is a lot going on, um, why not just bounce the loop as an audio file and drag it into Logic? Well, you could do that right at the end, but like my CPU was so low, it didn't matter. And I've done quite a lot of like, you see these little bits here, like reverses. And I was kind of doing that as I went, like. And so I never really got to the point where I was like, oh yeah, I need to bounce this out now because I'm done. I was literally tweaking stuff like that right up until the day we sent it off for master. So I like to be super flexible, like all the way up to the point of mastering. You know, I don't like to commit unless it's like a an effects sound or something like a reverb that you like on the sound. Yeah, I like to kind of just keep everything super flexible. That was, a, that was a big job getting that sounding the way I wanted it to, but yeah, it was worth it. I think these are some of the most banging drums that I've ever made. <laughs> Even though it's still, you know, it's mostly based off of that loop. I think every, you want to make sure you're only adding, you know, you're not subtracting. Um, I think everything we put in this and decided to keep is, is making it all better. So something we should show you is Here's the drum bus here. Here's what it sounds like raw. And here's what it sounds like with everything. So yeah, massive change there. So number one, this is my go-to bus drum bus compressor, I should say. It just gives such a brutal attack on the, on the top of the drums. Um, like the entry point of all the transients is so insane. Like, let me, let me pump it up for you and I'll, you can hear it. So that's obviously insane, like way too much, but you hear what it's doing. It lets through a ton at the start and it really slams it hard. And it's just got a really easy mix knob there. And that's what I like on compressors. I love working a compressor really hard to get the best flavor out of it and then just bringing down or bringing up the, uh, bringing up and down the mix. Uh, the Waves one, yeah, I'm sure the Waves one is fine. Probably sounds a bit different.
I haven't tried it much, to be honest. Um, yeah, I'm just a UA guy, but I'm sure it's sick. I'm sure the real thing is sick as well. Then we're going into some tape. Uh, the Studer A800, which I love on uh, big 4-4 drums like this. I just really, really like ha what it does to the hi-hats when a kick drum is happening. It just squashes it in this lovely way. Uh, I usually go for this GP9 tape. Um, and there's the settings underneath. I, th I think all I've done there is just take a bit of lows out, to be honest. That's it. But yeah. That's not actually going into the red as much as I would normally do. Uh, let me just pump it up for you guys so you can hear what it's actually doing. Yeah, so I probably had it around where I've got it now for a long time and then decided probably listening in the car or some other system that it was too, too squelchy. Um, but I'm so into squelch at the moment. I'm really into saturation, especially on drums. All my favorite tunes have all got very saturated drums, um, squelchy hi-hats. So, uh, the next one is the inflator back to the inflator. This is probably in the red as well. Yeah, just touching the red there. It does some really nice stuff if you take off this clip button. Just a bit more saturation, different kind of saturation. But yeah, the, I'll do a little on and off of this. just gives it life. I don't know what it's doing, but I love plugins like that where it's just a slider, you know, it's, it's cool. I just love simple plugins like that. You turn it on, it makes it better. You don't have to think about it too much. Uh, moving on, more saturation, a bit of satin, um, just, yeah, 14% is that. I'm taking out a bit of the highs there. I probably liked taking out the highs using this rather than the EQ. Got it on the tube setting. Yeah, just adding some sparkle. You need some pretty good speakers to even hear the difference that that's making, to be honest. It's minor. And then a tiny bit of master EQ at the end, which is just taking out some harshness. So yeah, just taking out some frequencies I didn't like. And then I really like the Oxford Limiter as well on drums. I think it just does a really good job at keeping it sounding natural, adds a little bit of overdrive and distortion. <laughs> Moving on for the bass, like I told you guys earlier, Monarch for this one. That makes me happy. So we're going through a distressor with that. Um, this plugin actually, well, this piece of hardware was essential to this tune. Yeah, so that's doing that. Got some EQ on there as well. And some Echo Boy, is that? Bit of delay. Yeah. So you wanna hear the drums with the bass? That is literally all the music there is. There is no synths, there is no pads in this whole song, which I'm kind of proud to say. Uh, we haven't really done that before. Um, it was that initial vibe of, of just this loop was all we thought we needed to get the get this shit off the ground. You was there standing all night. That was rolling in the studio for 15 minutes and Amine literally started singing and it was it was like get that mic in front of him man he's gonna he's gonna come with this really quick so yeah that's what we did um so here's here's some amino lead vocal amino yeah uh yeah hey yeah look 
You was there standing all night. So I'll do you a little before and after. Let's take off all the plugins. Look. You was there standing all night. So yeah, you can hear there's a lot going on on this one. Uh, firstly, straight into a tube tech. You was there standing all night. Just giving it some control, not really doing anything too crazy. Then this is doing all of the crazy. Uh, I got this on punish setting, drive up to four. L slightly backing off on the mix, but it is doing a lot. You was there standing all night. 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 So yeah, you can hear that is really giving it hell. <laughs> and then going through another distressor. I just wanted this vocal to sound like it was coming out of a talk box or not a talk box, what do you call it? An old radio box, like with a broken speaker that was just like it sounded crap, but it also sounded cool at the same time. And that's that's why I went for the distressor. I wouldn't usually use this. You was there standing all night. You was there. And I've got it pumping so hard that it brings out all of the underneath, like him moving around in the room and you know, just those little nuances that you miss sometimes when the compressor's not pumping hard enough. <laughs> I like to compress pretty hard. Um, here's some EQ. A lot of dynamic EQ. That's what I was looking for. Here you go. You was there standing all night. Your heart be matching with the lights. So I'm taking out more lows there, just making sure it sounds even more like an old radio machine type thing. Boosting um Boosting the high mids, but also taking away frequencies I don't like. So just bringing out that. You was there standing all night. And a bit of DSing at the top as well. You was there standing all night. Uh, you was there standing all night. Yeah, there you go. So just taking out the S's, as you'd expect. You was there standing all night. Then I've got this widener on it. I just found like the distortion and the vocal were too down the middle and I wanted to bring out that crispiness and the fears of the distortion and throw it out wide. So you can see I've only got it on the mid and the highs here. So that's bipolar. You was there standing all night. And with. You was there standing all night. It's minor, but in headphones makes a difference. Uh, and then yeah, it's just slowly panning from left to right as well just to give it a bit of variation because it's so mono down the middle like we like to layer up our vocals a lot of the time and get it nice and wide but with a brutal down the middle vocal like that i just like it going left to right cool um then there's a little bit more eq on the bus and then the effects are on the bus as well so there's um actually you was there standing all night your heart be matching with the lights so again, just adding to that old radio 50s distorted thing. Very subtle. Uh, then I've actually got Space Designer on there. Wooden booth. I told you I like it for making stuff sound like a bit worse and a bit dirtier. So here it is on there. You was there standing all night. Your heart be matching with the lights. Very low in the mix. Just adding a little bit of stereo because I was still missing that. You know, it was too down the middle for me. Uh, I think that is an automated just effect that comes in now and again. And then a time, yeah, and same with Valhalla. It's actually, they're off for most of the tune. They just come in for the build-ups. <laughs> Madness, but in the mix, you know. My what? My please don't fuck up. My my. There's uh, some double-ups here. You was there standing all night. Your heart be matching with the lights. Just adding crazy energy. Um, these are quite clean, actually. Uh, I've got it on punish, but I, I turned it down quite a lot. I think I liked the clean ones coming out through the sides. Some cool little ad libs down here as well. How many tracks in total? Uh, 112, it looks like. That'll be including probably a lot of hidden stuff too. Yeah, look, I've got all my instruments hidden away that we ended up not using. So it's probably way less than that. It's probably more like 60. So yeah, let's have a listen to, uh, to Slow Tie. 
very similar setup for him plugins wise in fact i i pretty much copied it all over i just wanted to emulate amino sound almost exactly are you mad? Must be out of your mind. You look so sad. Have a spliff, get high. She bad. Yeah, she racking up 10 lines. Come and take a... <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, his ad-libs are fucking amazing. <laughs> That's the sound of him breaking glass, I think, over his own head. <laughs> yeah, the go is... I want to sample that for another tune, probably. It's so ravey. 90s rave. And then you've got him backing up uh, Amine in the chorus. Please don't fuck up my high, my high, my high. Please don't fuck up my high, my high, my high. Please don't fuck up my high, my what? My high, please don't fuck up my high, my... All of this here is getting sidechained post effects. You know, you've got the delay, two reverbs, another delay. And then it's all getting side chained. So if you had to, if you had each of those on a separate bus, you'd have to have five side chains as well, and then copy those all over. So I just can't be bothered. Um, yeah, I like to just sort of, if I can, keep it all in a bus like that. My mix out chain. I always route all the instruments through one bus, and then all the vocals through another. I've done that since I was making tunes because I just, I guess it's the DJ in me. I love having like an acapella on one fader and the music on another and you know, it's just easy to draw for. Like you can see here at some point, I thought the music was too loud over the vocals. So I've just backed it off or I thought they were both too loud. Like, you know, that's all the music. It just makes it super easy to access, you know, especially like post getting it mastered even. Say you needed to get it remastered and whoever like Amine was like, my vocals not loud enough bang you just touch that and you're done you know it's it's fixed you don't have to go through every channel and mess with automation and then those two get sent to this um which is like an effects bus in case i want to do any like textural weird stuff like before it goes to the mix out but yeah i've got an rc20 on there by default at the moment and i haven't used it too much to be honest but i do love this width thing here i use that sometimes um i love in build-ups taking it all to mono and making it all get squashed and then bang, like as it drops, let the stereo out and it just like widens and it's super satisfying. Everything's going through that. So, you know, if you just want to draw for some automation, put the whole mix through a reverb or put the whole mix through a flanger or something crazy, you know, you could do it, do it here. Are you mad? Cool. So then the mix bus, yeah, here. So this is my pretty much my go to mix bus. So I'm just telling you guys all my secrets here. Straight into an SSL G bus compressor. Um, it's a familiar sound to my ears that's why i like it i just love it. all my favorite songs go through this compressor or at least the ones that were all made in the 90s you know there's something that it does to a song that just makes it sound finished and i don't know what it is um you know i barely i barely even hit it it's not really getting pumped too much at all like every day i mean it going just gonna mute those vocals in case we get any complaints for me and my ears like it's i i need that in there and then into some tape very light amount of tape on there and then i absolutely love this thing um i haven't seen many people use this but yeah uh, i've actually bought my dad a real one because he was recording vocals over lockdown and i was like dad you should get this wicked compressor and preamp all in one thing um but yeah i've got the digi one and it's great it's just a compressor basically but more of a mastering compressor um does what i need it to do then into a little bit of saturation tiny amount then the inflator love that thing and then into soothe which is probably the greatest plugin ever made it, it saves you so much time just the amount of time i've spent on the previous two albums notching and bouncing things out and then putting the frequencies in it just you don't need to do that anymore it's great but yeah i mean i've got it on the master out which i guess is probably not how most people use it um you can put it on a vocal or a screechy guitar but um, yeah, for those that don't know what it does, it basically takes out harsh frequencies, whichever you choose, like how wide this is, depends on which frequencies it takes out. Um, the best way to do it is if I press this button, you will only hear what is being taken out. So here's what it's actually removing.
So it's really focusing in on that hi-hat, that pss, 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 horrible resonance of the hi-hat, the bit you don't need. I could probably have done that back in the mix, but to be honest, I like leaving Soothe on my master out, even when I'm writing, just in case something starts feeding back or some horrible frequency is going on. Then I've got an EQ. It's doing absolutely nothing. I've got it in natural phase mode because it's on the master and I feel like it's just doing more for me at that stage in natural phase mode. I can hear it cutting a bit harder. Uh, I've taken off some bass here, but I decided to bypass it. I probably checked it in the car and was like, nah, the sub's good. I can leave that. And then, yeah, we've got just a little high boost of a decibel. I probably put that in and then I would have bounced it out again without and just told the mastering engineer, give it a dB of top end um, on, on the nice analog hardware thing you're using. That's usually I'd have an EQ there at the last stage as a guide for what I want to do in mastering. Um, and same with the limiter, you know, I've got the Pro L on there. Um, but the version you guys have heard won't have been through this. But that's my mix out. It's not too crazy. Um, yeah, compressor, tape, another compressor, saturation, inflator, soothe, EQ. Could you speak about layering the kicks? Yeah, sure. Um, sub. For the body. This one's for the punch. But, you know, you see, I'm, I'm taking out a lot of the sub there. If I put that back in. So I'm using that one much, much more for like a ooh. And then the sub is doing the stuff that you feel, you know, at the festival. And then there's a couple of like more of a clicky. Yeah, so that's doing like the top end of the kick. But there's a lot of kick in the loop, you know, already. So I didn't need to go too crazy. And there's that crazy Tom in there as well. Um. Oh, yeah. And I'm pretty tell that about these things, too. So I got I always have these on my project. It's just tape piss and vinyl crackle. Um, some plugins generate tape pierce and you've got, you know, some really good ones that do vinyl now as well. But I like to just have them to begin with rolling in the background because I don't know about you guys, but all my favorite songs, all my favorite songs have hiss, tape piss and vinyl noise and they just don't feel finished. Tracks don't feel finished unless they have that bit of grit on there, a bit of noise. So I like to start as, as I mean to go on. And so... Yeah, there's rarely a disclosure tune or any tune that I've produced that won't have a bit of hiss going on. Not always crackle, but hiss has to be there. My ears just aren't happy otherwise. So I just have this thing rolling all the time. Yeah, there you go. So that's, uh, that's a bit of my high, guys. It's such a... A simple one um i think it's a good it's a good o to keeping it simple a lot of tondo requests all right we can do tondo next how about that uh maybe on thursday we can have a look at tondo um i'll try and get howard on for next time as well that would be nice the other one peace out everyone hey.